Yo, it's Robbie Banks, and you're now tuned in with Houston Hip Hop Fix. Yes! I would say I'm the the voice for anybody who, you know, living, you know, I guess beneath they, they actual potential or not maximizing on their full potential. And, and anybody who have the strong desire to be better and improving on anything there is in their life, I think I speak for all of those people. And how my name came about was really just simple. You know, growing up my name, my nickname was always Rocky, so I just wanted to add a little flair to my last name and I, I, I just called myself Banks. I think I was, I had a little, like bar was spitting and I, I had a, a bunch of bank metaphors and I just ran with Bank. So what part of Houston were you from? What was it like from? Man, I grew up on the southwest side on West Belfort uh, and in Mo City. And it was just, you know, typical living for a Houston kid, you know. I got into some trouble, I got into fights, you know what I'm saying? We had, I did the, I dated girls, you know what I'm saying? It was just a normal life, you know what I'm saying? I would definitely say it was better than before I had to move, I moved into the city. Because at one point in time in my life, you know what I'm saying? We was homeless. Me and my mom and my little sister was homeless, so that's when I actually made the move to Houston in the seventh grade. The previous rap name was Tyrant. You were running with the rap group IC Gang. Yeah. Can you explain how you how you linked up with that collective? Uh yeah, when I when I was going by the name Tyrant, I was uh, about sixteen years old. That was when I first started you know, getting into music and really actually recording. And I had moved from the inner city to Missouri City. And that's when I linked up with Dice, Nate Da Vinci, and Dave Suave, and we, was, we formed Icy Gang. I went to Marshall with all of them. We all went to high school together. And they found out that I was rapping. And from there, we all just linked up. And he, they asked me, did I want to be a part of Icy Gang? They started a new thing called Icy Gang. And we linked up, we, we recorded, and from there, you know, we were doing our thing around the city as little youngsters. So what did you think whenever you saw like the rise of Dice and Chosen and how they just took off? Man, I thought it was what the city needed, you know what I'm saying? Like, now I feel like America and the world around it, they taking Houston more serious and they getting off of that Oh, we just about screwing, and you know what I'm saying, sipping, drinking, coming down the phone and phone. That's what Houston is about. We giving a different vibe now. So I think it's great that they out there shining the way they shine. And shout out to Icy Gang and the whole can or oh, Icy Life. My bad. Dice and Trill Sammy, dog. They doing their thing. So what was the reason why y'all kind of just took separate paths? Like was it natural or was it just like a conflict? Yeah, it, it was it was no conflict. It was definitely just I felt like it was natural. It was natural. I, I went off in 2012. I went to college. You know, everybody else was still in high school. You know, and they were still like doing their thing. And I had to focus on school and being the best student I could be. So from there, I pretty much stopped rapping. So they kept doing their thing. And it was like shit. How could I? You know. How could I say it was an issue or anything like that if I wasn't even rapping, you know what I'm saying? So once I hopped back in, I just decided to do my whole thing, reshape my, my whole image and go in with something just fresh and new. And I didn't, I didn't really want to associate myself with that because I felt like I, I didn't deserve to because I, I wasn't uniform there. I wasn't uniform there anymore. Like I, I, I had to, I had to leave that team. You know what I'm saying? But them still my little brothers, man. I'm proud of them, bro. But now that you are back rapping, can we expect y'all to kind of just get back in the studio and make some, put some music up? I definitely, I definitely feel like eventually that's gonna happen. I just feel like with what I'm on right now, my wave and the, the message that I'm conveying, it will have to be like the right the right moment in the right track. I, I just want it to be so organic to where it's like damn like 
they came together and made something crazy and phenomenal. But I definitely see it coming in the future. So what influenced you to start rapping? I guess when I was in uh, the 10th grade, I had uh, had English class and I had, I had did a poem in front of everybody and everybody was telling me, you know, yo, yo, I really think you got like a voice for rap. Do you rap? And I was like, nah. So at that point in time, I just fiddled around with it like any other kid. And I, did, I wrote my first freestyle over uh, Rubber Band Man by T.I. And once people hyped me up and gassed me up to, you know, ask me if I was rapping or not, I just went to the studio, made my first track, and from there it was just, I just kept going with it, just stay consistent. So how do you separate yourself from all the other upcoming rappers in Houston? Man, I would say my sound. I'm a hybrid of a lot of, a lot of the people that you would like to listen to or you listen to on a daily basis. It's, from the Big Shines to the top tier rappers, I grew up listening to Jay Z, N.W.A., Nas. You know what I'm saying? Eminem, those guys, and all the people that you listen to now, the lower tier, the Kanye, Kanye West, uh, Kendrick Lamar. All these people are offspring of those those artists, and they offspring of the great. So I would say I'm a blend of all those rappers combined. And how could you say I sound like anybody when I'm sounding like all those people? You know what I mean? It's like I, I feel like I, I feel like my science is so different. It's it's not it's not a beat you can compare any of mine to. I feel like it's such a, a broad a broad range that I have as far as my ability to make a track. And your previous project was called. In other words, I don't use judge anymore. Yeah. Can you explain that whole concept of that mixtape? That was really just my uh <coughs> my public my public confession. Like I got a problem that I'm facing and I know it's a lot of kids in my generation that are, you know, going through the same issues. And I was really trying to influence them to take a different route through my experience through that with that project and it was just all 100 percent honestly from the front to back i just wanted to give them a message and the words of encouragement that i heard throughout the years to help me get up out of that dark place and and feeling like i needed to crush myself you know what I'm saying or use drugs as a crush to hold myself up whenever i felt like i needed a pick me up when I was about 14 years old, that's when I really started getting into like popping pain pills heavy, you know, popping vitamins, and just really just, really just on pain pills just for no good reason. I didn't really start smoking like weed and doing like Zans and all that stuff until I got to college, you know what I'm saying? I was just got wild and just started experimenting with drugs and at one point in time I could say like, I was really addicted to them. It could it wasn't a day that went by where I wasn't popping his hand and or two or three at that at that time for that matter. So So what made you start? Shit, one day I don't know, I guess you could say I was depressed. And I just woke up one day and I just previously the night before I had popped like three Zans and I just I fell asleep. I fell asleep on his hands. And when I woke up when I woke up that next day, I just was smoking, smoking just, I was like, man, I need to get up. So I was taking tabs. And I guess a bad mixture of all those drugs just had me feeling some type of way. And I hit the dab, I hit some waxing. From there, I just felt my body starting to shut down. And so it was just a bad experience. Yeah, it was just a, a terrible experience. And when I went to the hospital, they was telling me from like, on a scale from one to ten being completely healthy, ten being completely healthy and one being like dead, I was at a two. So from that point I guess it was like a wake up call. I need to chill on what I'm doing. I gotta get back healthy. I gotta start exercising and I gotta watch what I put in my body. So I guess it was just a you know I a complete wake up call. I wanna change, do a 360. But of course it wasn't just like 
instantly. I still have relapses just like anybody else, you know what I'm saying? But eventually through help, man, I've been clean off the drugs for a year and a half now. So fast forward to 2017, it's a whole new year and not doing drugs anymore. Can you go into Trust and Banco? Trust and Banco came about, it was really just a a continuation of that, just that momentum that we had pushing from another news on the drug anymore. I didn't, I didn't have time to slow down. I felt like I, I kept, I had to keep telling more and more about myself, and I just treated it like my everyday interaction with people. You know, when I meet people, you know, eventually I might be a little introverted, but eventually I open up more and more and more until they see, you know the real person that I am, you know. But I really feel like I'm the most transparent person in the world. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm a very black and white kind of person. And I feel like I live in a world with a lot of gray areas. So I'm touching on everything from, you know, broken relationships, uh, you know, my childhood, you know, personal problems that I never speak about that I do, you know, that I still battle every day and currently right now and shit. I'm really just touching on more personal topics rather than giving more insights of who Rocky Banks is on this album. This whole project, I worked on it from the ground up with uh, Mufasa Enzo, aka also known as Dalion if you didn't know. And uh, I also linked up with uh, Nate Coop and Charity. And uh, my homeboy from Jacksonville, Miss uh, Jacksonville, uh, Florida, Jordan Lumley, who also produced the uh, opening track on another who's on the Joys anymore. And those are the only three guys I got on there as far as production. I would say it's like a, a jazz fusion, like with a little bit of, tra I guess you can have trap instrumentation in there, but man, it's, it's a lot of waves in there, it's a lot of vibes, like I'm, I'm creating vibes on the track, but at the same time I'm giving you those hard lyrics, it's no, it's no kindergarten raps on here, it's all big boy bars, you know what I'm saying, you can definitely tell that I matured as a, as an individual, it'll be like when you walk past the bakery or something and you get, and you smell something that you might think smell good, and it's like, oh, that caught my attention, hey, let me see what's up over there. Let me see what that is. I think eventually it'll just begin to <clears throat> spread. Just like this, just like another dude's on do drugs anymore. I don't really have any expectations for it, but I know that this body of work has its own legs. It's gonna spread and touch a lot of people. Especially because it's so I'm so vulnerable on it. What do you think is the biggest barrier someone like you has to cross in order to reach? commercial success. I know nowadays they're looking for a gimmick. I don't have a gimmick. You know what I mean? I just, I feel like it's, it, whatever grows from here, I'm not even looking for really, I would say commercial success. Because I feel like that platform of music has changed. You don't need to have commercial success. Like if once somebody, once you connect with a cult fan base, you can pretty much do anything. Look at the Chance the Rappers, Grammy nominated, independent artists, changing the game. Now the blueprint is laid for other artists to do that, follow that same formula. I feel like once, once, once we get to where we're supposed to be, and, and once that opportunity opens for us to walk through that door to get the commercial success, we'll be ready. So what can we expect from Banco in 2017 after the project drops? A whole lot of Banco in your face, you know, a whole lot of yellow hearts. We not slowing down this year, you know what I'm saying? We got shows, concerts. Shows and concerts. I would say right now, South by Southwest, we locking in at South by, we gonna get down to Austin, connect with all the artists that, we, you know, that we rocking with and that's rocking with us and shit. Get down there, connect with the fans and vibe out and create some rage and you know what I'm saying and do what we came to do and keep spreading these good vibes and this peace and helping people take a step forward and improving in their life, mentally, spiritually and physically.